So now let's take a look at creating an SQL Server agent job. Remember, we've already created jobs using the maintenance plan, but if we want to make a job outside of that, then we can right click here on jobs and click on new job. So we'll start by setting it, setting a job name and I'm going to try to create a PowerShell job here just to show you how it works, but we'll look at some other ways that we can do this as well. So I'm going to create a new job and I'm just going to call this test for the moment. And then I'd set the description of what this job was supposed to be able to do. And then this is just, you know, for my information or for the information of another admin who comes behind me. And then I can categorize this job if I want to. So, and then set who the job owner is, which defaults, by the way, to me because I'm creating it. Now, that gives me my general information. Then we set our steps for the job. And for each step, you can have multiple steps here. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to create a new step, and I'm just going to call this step one. And then this is where we get to set the type, and this is where we get to see the real power of jobs, right? Because I can run an operating system job, so this would be command, a uh, command executable. I can run a PowerShell command. I can do SQL server analysis. I can use as, uh, services command, uh, services query, an integration services package, or I can run a transact SQL script. And everything we did in the maintenance plan was pretty much running transact SQL scripts. In fact, if you go back and you review the video on creating that maintenance plan using the wizard, you'll see where we showed you how you could look and see what actual TSQL script was being run. But because we've uh, created a credential and a proxy for PowerShell, let's say we want to run a PowerShell command. So the type is PowerShell. Now, who are we going to run it as? Well, my SQL Server agent service doesn't have that the ability to run the PowerShell command that I want to, but that's why I created this proxy. And remember, we created a credential, and then we created a proxy using that credential. So I'm going to say run this using that proxy. And then I can in here type my uh, SQL command or my PowerShell command, or if I was using transact SQL, it would be the TSQL command or whatever command that I want to run. If I have that saved as a file, I can open the file and grab it that way. I can also copy and paste into here. So I'm just going to do a real easy get child item from C colon backslash backup. Okay and then hit OK. And that will give me my steps. And then I can add in multiple steps down here. Now I want you to see something here. And that is we have an option on get success and on failure. So I can in here define what I want to have happen with this step. Let me go ahead and edit my step here again. There we go. I can define what I want to have happen on a successful action or on a failure action. So on a success action, go to the next step. I can do multiple retries. I can set a retry interval. On a fail action, I can have it go here and tell me what I want it to do. So I can do or set different things to happen based on what happens with that uh, previous step. So basically, it allows me to almost build conditional logic into my jobs. Once I'm done with the job, then I can come down here and I can set schedules. So I can create a schedule for my job or I can pick from an existing uh, schedule. If I don't, then that is an unscheduled job and I just have to manually run it whenever I want. I can also set specific alerts, specific notifications, and specific targets, which is where I want it to execute. So in this case, I want it to just execute on my local server. So let me hit OK, and this will generate a new job for me. Now, I did not schedule this job, so if I want to execute this job, I have to do it manually. And for that, I can right-click and then start job at a specific step, stop the job, start PowerShell. Let me go ahead and start the job at a specific step, and it's I have one step, so you know that was real tough to do, right? So it's starting the job, executes the job, job uh, completed successfully. It didn't actually do much, but that's okay. I didn't really intend for it to. <clears throat> All right. So that's how we can create a manual job outside of our maintenance plans. Now remember, 
in the maintenance plan, we had a handful of things we could do for database maintenance, which was awesome, and it allowed us to string them all together. But the SQL Server agent jobs give us the ability to do some things outside of that in different SQL Server services or in PowerShell or Command Prompt to deal with, uh, with the operating system directly. It gives us some abilities to do things that we can't do just with maintenance plans. So let me give you an example here of a hypothetical situation where you might want to use this. If you remember from our backup plans, and by the way, I can open this up and edit the job as well here. From our backup plans, if you remember, let me see if I can view. this particular command. There it is. This is saving too, and if you remember the location, uh, it's a maintenance plan, it's... Yeah, this, isn't show, this is showing me my uh, command line, not my SQL script. So let's grab, let me cancel this, and I'm going to edit the maintenance plan here real quick. So let me go to my maintenance plan, backup plan. And just to remind you, this backup is backing up, whoops, wrong one. This one. It's backing up to c colon backslash aw dot bak. And it's doing that on, this one happens on a weekly basis, differential on a daily basis. You can review the video on creating a maintenance plan using the wizard to be reminded of what we did here. But the, what I want you to see here is this location, c colon backslash backup dot bak, or aw dot bak. Now, that's backing up to the same local server. I might want to, in fact, I probably would want to, move that off to a different location. Now there are a variety of ways to do that, but one way to do that is I could create a job that was a PowerShell job that instead of just saying, hey, show me that location, I could say copy from C colon backslash backup to another device, either across the network or a removable storage device or whatever. And I could have this execute every so often. I could schedule it to say run every day at like 8 a.m. So then it would uh, I copy off to a new location. So it would be a PowerShell command that moved my SQL back up to another location on a different server. That's just an example of how I can use these jobs in coordination with the maintenance plan to automate management of my SQL server.